Hi, this is Chris Lake, and welcome to my studio up in Scotland. I have been invited by the guys from Computer Music to do this month's uh, Producer Masterclass feature. So I'm going to run through the way that I made uh, a recent track called To The Point. I'm going to run through how, um, how I built up the track, what techniques I've used, um, what plugins I've used. How I've manipulated the sounds, um, the lay, you know, how I've gone about the structure of the track to achieve the finished article. It's uh, this track, to be honest with you, is very, very basic. It's uh, it didn't really take that long to make. It was a, it was maybe half a day, and I've taken quite a lot of. Uh, it's really like a. It's just heavy drums, um, a simple bass line, and. Uh, a little plinky sort of oscillated, uh, quite kind of clubby, druggy riff in the uh, you know throughout the track, and I've used some some big effects to try and uh, expand the sounds. Um, I just use some kind of cheeky techniques to I think work well in the dance floor. I mean I've tried this track out now for the past two months while I've been out touring, and it works really really well. So I'm happy now to let this track out for um, for release. So you're probably going to be quite distinctly unimpressed by how many tracks there are in there and how many parts there are in there. But I still, I still think it can be quite difficult to even get um, get to this point sometimes in a track. It's just, uh, um, I think it's just important to get the you know to get the right sounds in. I mean, I bash my head against the wall sometimes in the studio just trying to even get um, the simple drum track going. So um, perseverance is the key. So anyway, my uh, my project I made this in Ableton Live, and I've been using Ableton for about three yeah about three years now since version four. I started using the program, and uh, it's up to version six now. Very creative, and I think it's perfect for dance music. It's just so quick and easy to use. Great for if you're um, important loops or anything. For time it's brilliant for remixing. You know, when you get your parts, you can just throw the parts in really quickly, time them all up, and then sync them up to some drums and some synths and basses, and and get things happening really quickly. So it's great for vibing and and just making things happen. So on this project, what I have done is I started out uh, by building up some drums. I've, in all honesty. In this track, I've taken a lot of uh, um, drum loops off sample CDs, and I've taken single hits I like out of loops, and and built up the uh, built up the drums around uh, well using this method. One, one thing I was going to say uh, before I really get started is I think it's really important to name all of your tracks as well, just to, just so that you can when you're going back and and you're, you're looking at things, you can you can see exactly what know what track is what, put a detailed kind of um, explanation on your uh, your track name and so that you know what you're doing. So I've taken all the drums here and I have bust them into one channel, onto a drum channel and I've put it through uh, a compressor. I've compressed the whole drum channel and put it through a compressor with the threshold quite far down, just squashing the drums quite a lot with a fast attack, a fast release and quite a bit of makeup gain. And it just just to give a, a little bit of punch, pulls all the um, pulls all the um, drums tightly together. Uh, it just gives that uh, gives a really warm um, a warm drum tight drum sound. So I'd recommend I recommend that technique. And then um, on the master channel, I'm going through a little bit more of, um, just light compression. I use the uh, I've used the Oxengo Marquis to make the uh, the track compress a little bit on the uh, on the low end. I've got a um, BBE Sonic Maximizer, which is uh, I should put a little bit of low contour on a bit of um, the high end uh, sweetening. So just to just to give the the track a little bit of a glisten, and then popped it through the um, L2 Maximizer just to bring up the level of the whole track. Just limit, just some uh, um, limiting. 
and then uh, a little bit of stereo imaging. Not too much. Honest, I don't even know what it does, but it seems to sound good. And it works in the club. So that's how I've set it up, and then I've got the, uh, and then I've only got a few audio tracks. I've got the, uh, I've got the main riff, which, funnily enough, is four sounds coming off a drum kit off uh, battery, off a kit in um, Native Instruments Battery 3. Then I've got a bass line coming off uh, a, a synthesizer called the Fat Cat in, uh, in Native Instruments Reactor 5. Uh, a piano, a piano sample which I'm running off um, Contact 2. And some white noise, which I'm using as a whoosh, as like a tension builder, for um, just just for exactly that for tension, just to build build into um, certain areas of the track. So, if I mute off the uh, music parts here, I can break down for you the um, drums that I've done. So I'll give you a little blast of the just the beginning of the drums when they come in. <laughs> So that was the uh, the basic drums that I put in. So this is kind of like one of the bases of the um, of the drum loop. This loop fully expanded actually sounds like this. I normally I'll throw a, a loop into the sequencer and then I'll try and find some sweet spots and uh, you know I really in particular like just this repetitive. It's got a bit of a drive to it, but then um, you can also single out one hit out of this loop just to isolate sounds, and then you can move it around in the sequence very easily. So if I just like the hat, I could just take the volume tool and just take take an individual sound like that and I can move it around in the sequence and move it to a different time and try and time up with different parts of the sound. Another simple loop that I just chopped up, taking sounds, individual sounds that I liked. And then this is just a um, little didden that I've stuck through the auto filter in live. Before, before the auto filter, it sounded like this. So pull it through the auto filter, just give it a little bit of a muffled, dull tone within the loop. So next up, I've got the all-important kick drum. On this kick, I have um, I've chosen a one a one hit, and I have uh, added some. More bass using a plugin called the R Bass from uh, Waves, and on this I've just put uh, a little bit of intensity um, at 65 hertz, which is just just gives it a little bit more meat for the uh, for the nightclubs. I mean, some people might say it's a little bit too much bass for a, a club track, but I think I think this sounds fine. It's been working really well in my uh, in my uh, in my sets. It doesn't sound too much. It is very bassy, but it works. And on a secondary track, I've taken, I've put a, a little, a little hit and kick just here. What I've done is, I've taken the kick and I've just taken the very, very beginning of the kick and just a small section, so it's just like a little slice of the kick, you just, use, just use it as a fill. Just gives it a little bit of groove. Next I've got a hat loop. Very simple, like all the drums in this track. And a little reverse hat. Just leading into um, it, leading into the next bar. Just all gives that, it just gives the drums a little bit of a rush. Then I've taken a clap from another loop. I've isolated this clap from the loop, and just gives a very full. 
call sign for me. And then further on in the project, I introduce a second um, clamp or a snare, however you want to look at it. So this snare. And on, on here, if you probably see, as you just heard, I have a little reverse snare into into one, into one of the last snares. You can hear it in the full loop, that'll make a little bit more sense. And then a little double snare hit on one of the last tracks. A little closed hat. And that is all of the drums. So the whole drum sounds like this. And another hint that I've got is uh, because I've got these two snares here, a little hint that I've got is to pull one of the snares back so that it hits just before the um, hits before the kick drum because I've got all the drums being compressed uh, and the snares hitting just before the kick, which is really the kick's really triggering the um, the compression to kick in. It just gives a nice little snap to the rhythm. Um, I've, some of the tracks that I've previously used, I've used um, a series of claps, maybe four to six claps to build up one clap sound. And I've pulled, um, I've pulled the, uh, some of the claps to hit early just before the, the kick, so it just gives it a nice, um, just gives some different tones and textures. That's a nice little tip, just move move sounds just a little bit off their normal quantized position to just try and get a different groove going. So that is the drum groove. Okay, next I'm going to show you um, the music parts that I've introduced into the track. So first I'll uh, let you hear the, the bass line that I've added into the track. So I'll, I'll play the drums first and then I'll drop in the bass line, I'll, I'll unmute the bass line into the track. I've gone for a uh, very simple two note bass line sound, it's just uh, what I've chosen to do is use sounds that I can manipulate, that can add energy with you know, different ways that they sound, just opening the cut off and things like that. So I'll play it and then I'll play, I've changed some of the settings on it. So that's the bass line there. And now I'll play you uh, the sound when I open the um, the amount of cut-off envelope that is applied onto this patch. As you can hear, it just gives uh, different energy to the track. Um, depending on how much is um, applied. So that's the bass line. Yeah, I'm just I'm just running that bass line dry, and I'm also running that bass line through the um, the, comp the, uh, the, uh, the drum group track. It's just all going through the same compressor as the um, as the drums as well. So it's quite an overloaded compressor, but if you get the settings right, you're going to get the right sound. Next, I've got the uh, main riff. Now this sound is um, some hits triggered from battery, you see here. And what I've done is um, I've added a ping pong delay and some dynamic tube. I've, 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 put, the, I've put the ping pong delay and then I've added the dynamic tube, so the dynamic tube is um, Adding the effect on onto the delay as well. So I'm mean, gonna play this without I'll play the sound without the effects and then I'll add these in. <coughs> Which sounds quite heavy with the uh, with the main groove and the bass line. <laughs> Simple drums and a simple um, riff, which is really just some drum sounds with with a bit of delay on it, which has got a bit of a tune and a, and a ring to it. 
it's just the same as you know I suppose that's what a lot of people are aiming for in dance tracks just something that's a little bit catchy and uh, and makes you want to dance so next um, the last musical part I've got is a little piano riff <laughs> Now this piano sound I have got running through an auto filter. I filter the uh, piano in gradually over the track. I'll show you how I do that in a second. Um, I've also got um, the PSP Vintage Warmer on. Just apply it, just, just to give the... It's just a bit of compression to just... Uh, um, it, it's like... Um, just gives a bit of a warmth to the sound. And a bit of stereo imaging to widen the sound. Again, I'll just do it because it sounds good. I don't know what it does. I mean, the more technical-minded person out there might tell me that I'm doing this all wrong, but it works for me. Um, and that is that sound. It's just a piano sample, um, like a, a layered piano sample that I'm, I'm playing out of a uh, contact. So that is all the musical parts. The last thing that I've got here is a, um, a white noise, which all it is is a simple white noise tone coming out of Trilogy that I have put through the auto filter that I um, I just filter up and I've got a bit of ping pong delay on that's all I've added to that sound so this that sounds like um, this Not rocket science, but it works with the um, it works well with the track. So when you put all these elements in, uh, you get something like this. So it's all simple elements, sounds that probably most people have got in their um, you know all sound capabilities that everyone's got in their uh, in their studio. It's, um, so it's all achievable. So that 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 is that was the basic groove that I got all together. I got all these sounds uh, together in a, an eight or a sixteen bar loop. Built up the groove, and the next thing I did was I, I set out for the arrangement. So I first went off for uh, I just went for a sixty second introduction. It's very very DJ friendly. I mean this isn't one to really be sitting down and uh, uh, listening to while you're eating your Sunday lunch. This, this really is mainly for the clubs. Um, so I just introduced the track like this. I'll jump in to about 45 seconds. Using the simple white noise to build up to a bass line drop. Again, all very, very simple stuff. And then uh, after 16 measures, I introduce the main riff, which is coming off the battery. And I've also applied a filter to this, which uh, I filter in the uh, the riff, just to, just to uh, gradually build, build up impact. <laughs> So that's gradually introducing that sound. So now I'm going to show you how I uh, use the sounds that I've got and manipulate them using uh, ping pong delay and uh, reverb to uh, use um, to make builds and falls in the track. But what I've done is I took the uh, the main riff and I have uh, increased the feedback level as we're building into this section here. And I've also changed the, um, the dry and wet settings so that when the music's building up, um, I've, made, I've, I've let, the, um, let through more of the wet signal. So it all sounds very spacey and, and crazy. And also what I've done is I have sent 
through a bus. Uh, I've sent through a bus channel um, the main riff into a reverb on this bus channel, a big reverb with lots of decay. I'm sure if you can see here, lots of decay and, um, and a big size of room. And so what it does is it just create all, all of these sends and they just create this big spatial effect. And the last thing that I do, sorry on the delay, is here I reduce, I gradually reduce with automation the, um, the delay time in milliseconds. So if you zoom in here while I'm playing this, you'll see all of the automation happening with the track. <laughs> So it makes for one big almighty effect. Um, so this here, this automation is me sending the main riff to the um, to the send channel, which has the reverb on it. And so that was just like the first little break there. And also when when I've come back in from the track, I've, I have opened up the uh, the bass line. So there's more, uh, so it's more growly when it comes back in. Just adding next levels to the track and creating tension. So then further on in the track, I uh, I introduce the piano sound that I showed you earlier. And as you can see, I've um, automated the auto filter to open up a, a low pass um, cutoff filter to open this up into the second break section, where I use exactly the same effect, just um, with a bit more intensity, you know, with the, uh, the delay, the ping pong delay on the main riff. <laughs> So as you, as you can see, this is all simple sounds, it's just using automation, simple effects to um, create rises and falls in the tracks and just create tension on the dance floor. It, it, like I said before, this is just a very, a very simple track. Um, so I, I filtered out the, uh, the bass line here, sorry, the, uh, the piano, I filtered out the piano and gradually build in the uh, filter back in the main riff. I'll do, I'll play this back to you now. Just some shuffly hats to again add tension. So this is all building up to one third last big breakdown. Uh, again, this is all automation, except this time I've got the, um, you know, I've got the piano right to the end. I've got the um, the main riff all going crazy with the delays. Um, but what I do this time is I don't just slam straight back into the track. I uh, I leave a big space and I let all the reverb and all the effects that are built up tail off. Uh, and then bring back the main riff on its own. Then just bring back the drums and the bass line all together with the uh, the main riff, just for uh, as one last bang. It works really well on the dance floor. So that was it. Uh, again, just you know, all, all the same sounds, just manipulated um, in a certain way. Well, I think that's got a lot of impact, and um, it works really, really well on the dance floor. So obviously, you see, you take that main riff with the uh, the white noise and the and the piano building up, and it and it creates a lot of tension. So, and then <coughs> just felt the sounds down, drop back to the drums, and have a. Uh, a uh, just a beat outro and that was the track complete so that is how I go about um, completing a, uh, a dance track 
for the you know for the clubs. A simple dance track. Uh, that's my tutorial. I hope you've taken something out of it. Um, I hope you've learned something from it. You, you might not have because my techniques aren't that good. But um, yeah, hopefully this is used to somebody. Thank you very much.